With me now is the author uh, herself, Mona El Tahawi, and from Berkeley, Berkeley, California, the writer and social anthropologist uh, Saba Mahmoud. Um, can you really brand the whole region in quite the way you have? I mean, how widespread is this utter repression that you describe? Well, what I do in my book, John, is I look at what I call the toxic mix of religion and culture. And I must specify here, I'm not just talking about Islam, because when I look at a country like my country of birth, Egypt, for example, and I look at um, the awful practice of female genital mutilation, which for women between the age of 15 to 49 is by government figures um, affects 91% of women, it's practiced by Muslims and Christians in, in, in Egypt. So when I look at the region, I look at how that toxic mix of religion and culture plays out, but under this big trifecta of what I call the, the misogyny of the state, street, and the home. And it's against that trifecta of the state, street, and the home that we need the social and sexual revolution. Uh, Professor Sabah Mahmoud, I mean, if we look at child marriage, if you add FGM, I mean, there clearly are very serious instances um, and pretty widespread, of, of, of fairly grievous suffering from women. They absolutely are, and they're reprehensible. And what happened to Mona in the streets of Egypt was reprehensible, as is what is re reprehensible is what is happening to the male leaders of the revolution as well against the Egyptian uh, autocracy. What I find um, so disturbing about her uh, Mona's analysis is that she actually thinks that culture as such is needs to be thrown out, Arab Islamic culture, Arab Christian culture, in order for this to, to, uh, to have a solution. If we would never make such a call, for example, when we consider the kind of uh, um, misogyny that is characterizes America, uh, United States of America, for example, between two, uh, anywhere from two or more women are killed every day by their husbands and lovers and boyfriends. And yet what we think when we think about that, we think about, well, what is the solution to this? How do we solve the problem that is particular to the socioeconomic and other kinds of family dynamics? How do you protect women by law against domestic violence and so on? Nobody calls for the overthrow of American culture right. as what is being called for in this case as an overthrow of Arab culture. Let's pause it on that. that I, I have never no, called no, for you... the overthrow of Muslim or Arab culture. I've said that we have to fight the misogyny that results from the toxic mix. So you accept you can have a Muslim culture that does not oppress women? Well, I mean, first of all, there's nothing called Muslim culture. There, there is a culture that, that uh, across the region many countries uh, share similarities in, but it's, it's the way that it interplays with Islam in different countries. So, for example, in Saudi Arabia, according to their interpretation of the, of the religion and their cultural practices, women can't drive cars, whereas in Egypt, which is a Muslim-majority country, women can drive cars. Now, I've never, ever said that misogyny is exclusive to the Middle East and North Africa. I've lived in the US for 13 years. I'm a joint citizen. And misogyny, as I say in my book clearly, lies on a global spectrum. What, what I am saying is that it, it's differing in degrees. And what we need in the Middle East and North Africa is a concerted feminist revolution, which is a social sexual mm. revolution, that takes on issues like domestic violence and marital rape in the same way that feminists in the US have for decades. But I've never ever suggested we need to get rid of Muslim culture or Arab culture. I belong to a, mm. a Muslim feminist organization movement called Musawa, which looks at ways to reinterpret the religion in feminist ways that are not used against women. Sabah Mahmoud. Well, I think what's really important here is the term culture itself. As an anthropologist, I would say that anthropology, that actually was largely the professional study of culture, has really come to look suspiciously at the very term, as if culture itself is the a wellspring for women's oppression. What uh, we clearly have to look at the socioeconomic issues, racial issues, for example, in the United States, just as we have to do the same for ethnic issues, socio re the religious frictions, but socioeconomic and, and, and perhaps at the, at clearly the upper class of men. women. As, as well as the behavior of men, absolutely, but upper class women tend to have a much more protected existence no matter where they are, whether they're in the United States or in Egypt. Same is true for India. So to simply say that culture is the actually the wellspring for women's oppression has been under attack by feminists of all stripes for a very long time. Let, let's pick this that up. Let's pick cool that up specifically. The, 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 that it is the socioeconomic issues that really need addressing, um, that, that, that this is a consequence of of, of, of low education and p p poverty. Well, I think the, the point that I make in my book over and over again, as I said, John, it's a trifecta of misogyny from the state, street, and the home. So yes, in some countries like my own, Egypt, which, is, which are poor countries, yes, women suffer because the economy is bad and generally the situation in the country is bad. 
But there are richer countries like the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia where there are more women on campuses, university campuses, than men. And yet when they graduate in a country like Saudi Arabia, they, they have very few job opportunities. In countries like the UAE, which have had women ministers, Women are obliged by law mm. to breastfeed their children up until the age of two. A man in the United Arab Emirates has the right mm. to beat his wife and children as long as he but doesn't you know, as, as, So, you know, so it's a combination of the law, the economy, mm. the way... And, but, you know, but, but as I hear you, I'm just wondering whether you're being intentionally provocative in order to get the debate going or whether you actually think, really, a, a, a lot of mosques, for example, or, or mullahs or whoever uh, need, need, in a sense, to be closed down or whatever well, in order to get your, your point uh, un achieved. Undoubtedly, John, there are clerics, both Muslim and Christian, as I make very clear in my book, in a country like Lebanon, for example, when feminists tried to push an anti-domestic violence law, it was Christian priests and Muslim imams who managed to get language out that was going to criminalise marital rape mm -hmm. and, even worse, put in language that gave men the right to sex on demand. Right, right. Let me, let me get to Sabah Mahmoud, because I'm wondering let me just, uh, whether, yes, whether you I think find... What's yep. I'm just wondering whether you find I think what's... you have a, a solution that uh, has evaded uh, um, Mona. Well, I think what's really important to understand here is that absolutely UAE, Saudi Arabia, these are monarchies, they're very repressive monarchies, questions of politics has to enter here. They uh, brandish about a form of Islam that is actually not the kind of Islam that is practiced either in Egypt or Pakistan or Tunisia or Morocco. Or for that matter, their Arab conservatism is very different from the kind of conservatism that is practiced in other parts of the Middle East. So basically say they're all Arab and therefore culture is at fault. I think what happens is that when you say culture is at fault, what you then the diagnosis leads to a solution that is really a cultural solution rather than institutional solution, rather than looking at the broader factors of politics, the state policy, and the kind of cahoots between a military and the junta well, that, that is going on both in Egypt and other parts of the world. So both the diagnosis right. and the solution, the solution follows from the kind of diagnosis we have. If we say the right. culture of UAE is Arab and it's the same as as the as as Egypt, that just simply doesn't make any sense. These are two very different kinds so, of political entities. Sabah Mahmoud, I mean, the great thing is at least to talk about it, and it's very good to have talked to you about it. Thank you very much for coming in. And Mona El Tahawi, I know you've got bursting to say much more, mm -hmm. but thank you very much. There's always the book to buy. Thank, thank you. you.